Thank you for uh, joining my talk. My name is Alin and uh, we are going to talk about incremental feature development with web components. It's going to be um, half, uh, half a talk and half a uh, live, co live coding session. Before we, we start, maybe you're wondering who I am and why I'm talking about these things. I am uh, one of the co-organizers of a monthly meetup in Bucharest uh, for uh, Agile Talks. I facilitate um, open spaces within that meetup. I have organized coding dojos, product development meetups. I am also one of the co-organizers of the Global Day of Code Retreat. And during my day job, I am a software developer at Mosaic Labs where I'm building Eventrix, which is a platform for connecting event organizers and speakers. Why are we talking about incremental feature development? Um, we're talking about this subject because we want to uh, develop in uh, a safe way. We want to develop in such a way that we can keep track of uh, our work and not to get lost in, uh, in, all the, in all the details. And if you look at the Wikipedia page for iterative and incremental development, you will see that it defines it as increasing increments of capability. You may have seen this image on Twitter or on social media. Uh, this image is uh, showing how an MVP should be built. So instead of uh, building um, bits of features, bits of functionalities that actually don't work, do not provide value for the user, we have to build, or it's a better way to build the MVP in such a way that at any point in time the user will have uh, a working version, something that they can use, something that they can get value out of. So why would we need incremental feature development? You may have found yourself into the situation, in, like uh, in that image, where you have the product owner coming to you and say, here's the story, the user story, and all the acceptance criteria, all the wireframes, all the specs, all the use cases, all the test plans, the diagrams, the architecture, never, no? Well, I have. <laughs> so at that point, you're, you're standing there and you're wondering, how am I going to deal with all that complexity? And um, there are a couple of techniques that you can use. Uh, for example, story slicing. If you have a big user story, you can uh, start slicing it with, uh, into much more user stories, smaller stories that you can reason about. You then prioritize those user stories. You focus on what's important, on what brings value to the user. And while you develop, you commit often. You take baby steps so that if you make a mistake, you don't lose much work if you have to go back and start from uh, la your last save point, basically. Another way to deal with complexity um, is um, a technology uh, that is called Web Components. You might have heard about it. Um, and the reason why Web Components are suitable for tackling complexity, tackling complexity is that they address a common need, they do one job really well, they work predictably in a wide variety of circumstances, they are useful right out of the box, they are composable, they can be styled according to whatever um, 
style or design you have. They can be extended. Um, they can be used in such a way that you are always thinking in small steps. You can adapt it to, to the user and to the, the device. They are adaptable. And they also deliver a key benefit to HTML authors, not just coders. So they, they are um, essentially uh, very uh, suitable in being developed uh, by uh, people that are not programmers, not developers, but just HTML code, just HTML authors, designers, UXers, so on and so forth. Which reminds me that I lied a little bit in the title of this talk. I said that I will demonstrate uh, the development with web components, but uh, instead, I will um, use uh, React, which has um, almost all of the features of Web Components, except for that extending HTML part. So Web Components is defined by the, pro the, the um, Polymer project, have been defined as being encapsulated interoperable and custom elements that extend HTML uh, itself. I'm not that interested into extending HTML or the HTML standard, the HTML uh, spec. What I'm interested in when developing something is having bits of code, bits, pieces of code that I are encapsulated, interoperable, and custom to my needs. That's, that's all I care about. So we're going to take an example, and we're going to, to build it live. What you see here in this uh, image is a feature from that uh, product that I mentioned, Eventrix. This feature is called the Program Builder. This is a builder for the schedule of a conference, like this conference I take. And as an event organizer, I need uh, something that can help me build that schedule to assign uh, talks to time slots and to have a way to rearrange them, delete them, edit them, so on and so forth. We're going to build something like that. Uh, this is uh, the, the live version of, of the web app. Uh, but what we're going to build is something much, much simpler than that because uh, we, we don't have the time to, to develop all that. But we're going to build something that is sufficiently uh, complex and uh, sufficiently close to the real production scenario. And let me show you the, the web app that we are going to build, the, the final version. So this is the, the initial list of talks that we have in the program. We have two, two talks already in the program, and we need to add more. We click the button, and we add a new slot, a new talk, a new session. And we have to provide uh, a speaker image. We'll take Stephanie's. We have a speaker name. And we have a talk title. We save, and we have the, the new slot. Uh, what you can notice is that we have something like a suggestion. When I start typing uh, the speaker name, it provides me a list of the existing, speaker in, ex existing speakers. In case I have to add uh, the speaker uh, again, Maybe they have a second talk during the day or in the second day. So it helps me not typing again the image address, the speaker name. It, it helps me in uh, providing all that information. It auto-completes the, the avatar field. And it also does something interesting. Instead of sending this, 
the, the uh, query to, to the server on each key press, it waits a little bit before uh, it sends the, the request. So I start typing. It shows me a progress bar like it's loading, but it's not actually sending anything until I actually start typing. So you see I type, nothing happens in the console. And when I stop, it just then sends the request to the server, and then it says that it found something or not. So that's, uh, that's something added on top of that. So instead of uh, hitting your server with useless requests, because you're not interested in all the requests, you, you only want uh, results only after you finish typing, you, you have to debounce, that's the term, for delaying the, the request. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's the basics of, of our web app. OK. So that being said, we have our requirements from our product owner. That's what we have to build. And from the product owner's perspective, this is basically a, a single piece of functionality. <coughs> but what I have to do is uh, put uh, a little bit of order into this uh, complexity. And I do that by splitting this story, this epic, in multiple pieces. And I prioritize them. So first of all, the product owner is uh, saying that they want material design. It's the shiniest thing right now on the market, so we definitely have to have material design. Figure that out. We have to have a list of talks, a button to add a new talk, a dialogue that is displaying a form. We have to, the user have, has to have some speaker suggestions in case they want uh, the same speaker. Autocomplete, delay, debounce, and the loading bar. I prioritize them in the order that I can uh, tackle these requirements, and I start working on them one by one. So let's do just that. I am going to check out the new branch. And my web application is blank. So what do we have here? Requirements, material design. What options do I have? Well, React and uh, the ecosystem is helpful enough to provide uh, something called React Toolbox. And it's not the only li library similar to, to this. There are others. What it does is give you beautiful material design components, ready to use. Just start using them with no problem. For example, I don't know, uh, we want some date picker. And there you go, I can just use this. So that's what our, we're going to do. We install this, um, this library. I already did that. And we can use it uh, out of the box. This is our starting point. Um, quick note, we are going to use re, uh, Redux to have state management. I'm not going to go into details with Redux because that's not the whole topic. Uh, if you um, have questions about it, I can answer them at the end of the session. Um, so let's, let's take the, f the, the first, um, the, 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 second, uh, the se second item of the list. Uh, we need to display a list of talks. And it needs to be a beautiful card, a beautiful material card. So in the list of components, I can see that I have cards. And they look like this. So I'm going to just copy-paste 
because copy paste is always a good idea, as everyone knows. And let's see what we what we have. Also, we have to import the button, the, the card from the library. We have to add some or not. Anyway, let's see what we have. OK, so that's our first thing that we can commit. It's working, our first uh, experiment. We add an example card to the app. OK. Now, we need to have this uh, card customized somehow. We need to um, have a session, basically, so a talk that has an avatar, has a title, actually not a title, but a speaker name, right? And <coughs> a talk title. So we go and uh, take this information, right? We have Stephanie Hassler as a speaker name, and her session is outside in TDD. Happening into right, right at this moment in another room. So if you get bored, this session you can always go to that session as well. This has to go outside of the return, and the card title now is session avatar session. Name, session, talk, right? There you go. So this is our first talk that we have in the list. We commit this. Add a hard-coded talk. OK. Now, we know that we have to display a list of sessions, right? So instead of having just one card, we have to provide a list. So let's add more. Let's see. I'll just extract some information from our reducers. We have some sessions here. We copy paste, like I said, very good idea. And now what I have to do is to map over that list. I have to say sessions map. This is a session. And this card goes inside. Let's see if it's working. It's not working because sessions is a list. There you go. OK. We have a list of sessions. So now we commit a list of hard coded sessions. But our application doesn't work with hard coded data. All the data has, has to come from our state management um, library. 
So instead of having this list of hard-coded data, we replace it with something that comes from Redux. And we do that by replacing this with data coming from Redux. Redux provides us uh, the data through the props property of the component. So we assign this to the props, <coughs> from the props to the sessions variable. And there's something wrong. Sessions, plural. OK, so this is the data that we have into our Redux store. So it's working. We commit. Display sessions from the Redux store. OK, but now if I look at this code, it looks kind of messy. Not messy enough, but I know that this can go very wrong very soon if I keep adding to this, uh, to this file. This is the, the entry point. It should be sim as simple as possible. So I have to extract. I have to extract the things that can be abstracted. So the first thing that I can extract is this card. This is basically the representation of our session card, right? So um, if IDEA would help me uh, in extracting safely this code, I would do it. But because it doesn't, I will just use a component that I've already extracted previously. I will show it to you. It's just the, the thing that I've talked to you about. It's a session card. It's the same, practically the same code with some styling added and receiving the avatar, the name, the talk from, through the props. So we'll use just that. We'll use the session card and we will provide the session prop, right? It's starting to look better. Does this still work? Yes, it does. It even adds some styling. It separates uh, uh, these two talks. I commit. So extracted a session card component. What else can I do? This, I can extract this because this is the representation of a list of cards, a list of sessions. So I can extract this as well into a custom component. This is it. I've already done that previously, so I'll reuse this sessions card. It maps through the sessions and returning a session card for each session. So let's do that. We replace this with a sessions component, which has a sessions prop. Right? So let's see if it still works. It does. Commit. Extracted a list of sessions component. OK. So my list of sessions is done. My task is done for that item, the second item. Let's move on to the button to add a new talk. Let's see what the tool, toolbox has for us. Well, uh, the toolbox should provide us buttons. There you go. Lots of buttons. And we pick one, right? We take this button, and we go into our application, and we put the button here, OK? So we, ha we have add session. And it should be not flat, but uh, a raised button. And we have to import the button from the library. And I have to do some 
additional stuff because I know that it will not work otherwise because I'm sneaky like that. And let's see. Oh, look, a button. Doesn't do anything for now, but it looks nice. I'm satisfied with this result, so I'm going to commit. Added button to add slot. Doesn't do anything for now. OK, good. Now, what do I have to do? A dialog. I have to show a dialog when I click the button. Hmm. The dialog looks like this. There's a dialog. Let's copy this into our app. And there's lots of things happening here. The state, there's an internal state. There's some actions. I don't need these actions for now. Uh, there's a handler to, to hide the, the dialogue. There's a title. So let's, let's copy this just to see how it, it works for now. Right? We, we just want to see that everything is working fine. We have to import. Always forget to import. Okay, so there's a problem. Maybe this will help. I don't know. Let's see if maybe yes and no. Something wrong, something wrong. Why is it not working? Because I have not assigned this, this handler to the button. I have the handler only for the dialog to hide. So I say, I need to say something like on click, this handle toggle, right? Let's try again. Oh. What does this mean? Has already been unmounted. Hmm. This is new. Let's see, let's see. Title. The state. What if I do this? Just. No. What if I do this? Yes, OK. So go back, right? Click the button, shows the dialog. Click outside of the dialog, it hides. OK, so we have a working version of a dialog. Added an example dialog shown when clicking on the button. What else? Now, instead of the state, I want to use the, the state of, of, the, um, of, of Redux. So we can add here something like uh, dialog state dialog. And what else? We remove this state because we don't want to handle state internally into the into the um, the components. We we want to use Redux, so we say instead of setting internal state, we dispatch an event that says show dialog true. This is to show the dialog. And we need another handler to hide the dialog. And show dialog false. So show dialog goes to the button. Hide dialog goes to the dialog handlers, to the 
dialogs properties. Let's see. Is it still working? No, because this should be this props dialog active. How about now? Yes. Click. Outside. It's working. OK. Commit. Um, replace internal state with Redux state for the dialog. OK. Good. Now, again, this starts to look a little bit messy. So this is a dialog. We have some handlers. It kind of needs to be extracted into its own component, right? So we have a component somewhere around here that's called new session dialog, right? We have a handler for the hide dialog. And we have basically the same thing. It can receive any children whatsoever, right? So we use that instead. Replace this. Where were we? In the app. Let's close everything else because it starts to get in the way. So we replace this with the new session dialog. Right? We import it. This is going away because it's inside the component. And we don't need this anymore here because it's mentioned into the component. So let's see if that works. Click. OK. Working. Commit. So extracted a custom dialog component. Inside this dialog, we want to have a form, right? And again, this can go on and on. Uh, we have a form. I already have um, extracted it. There's a lot of code here that I don't know if uh, I, for sure we don't have the time to, to show it, uh, to, to build it step by step. But the basic idea is that this new component is a form, and it has inputs provided by the React Toolbox library, like uh, we've, been, we've did so far. We have some buttons. So we can pass this inside the dialog, right? We have to show the form inside the dialog. And we have to do what? We have to new session form is not defined. Line 27, it means that it's not imported. It is imported. Maybe. All oh, right, 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 right. You're right, form. Let's, uh, I don't know why this is not uh, auto completed, but let's go with. So it's not new session form, it's session form with inputs. That's, that's what it is. Session form with inputs. Right? OK. So now we have a form with stuff that I can use. It's not doing anything just yet because we haven't uh, connected this to the Redux yet. We don't have any state management for the input fields. But for now, it's good enough. We have a form inside the dialog. Add form inside the dialog. What else? I said that we have not connected this to the Redux form, right? To, to the Redux uh, state management. Again, there's lots of things to, to type. So instead of doing that, I'm going to show you just uh, what I have did previously uh, be before this session. So I changed this component, and I can show you the differences. 
I introduced what is called a Redux form. It's another library that provide us, provides us a new component called field. And it's basically the same thing as an input. And it receives the component, a custom component and material design component, this input that I have previously, I had previously. And it looks pretty much the same. But if I replace this session form with fields, let's see inside the app, session form with fields, add session, yada, 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 I don't care, save. Now I have some information there. Cool. Use. Redux form for state management. Awesome. <coughs> Next. We have a dialogue form, speaker suggestions. OK, speaker suggestions. What can I do? Now, if you Google auto suggestion for input fields, React, whatever, you can find out that there's a library providing you with a component that is called auto-suggest. And you just have to provide the suggestions. You have to provide the uh, function that is uh, providing that suggestions, the list of suggestions. In, in this case, I do a search for the session name to lowercase and find it by value, the index of, meaning if I can find the, char the characters in the speaker name, I do a unique uh, function because uh, the same speaker can, can uh, show up multiple times. Anyway, this is a function. Basically, this is the same thing that goes into a backend, maybe. I don't know. We don't have a backend. We just simulate it. And when we, we find the, the suggestions, we show them, and we, we hide the, the, the progress bar. And this progress bar should not be here just yet, because we have not reached that step yet. Let's see. So we can use this. I have uh, created a component that wraps this component provided by auto-suggest. So I have an auto-suggest field, right? And with this auto-suggest field, I have a, su a session form. So that's, that's all that I've changed, the auto-suggest field. If we compare <coughs> this to this, you can see that the only thing that changed is obviously the, the component name. And instead of field, now I have an auto-suggest field with an additional property that handles the change management, uh, the change event of the Redux form. That's, that's some details that I couldn't get around. So it's, uh, it has to be provided there. So we're going to use this. We're going to use the session form with auto suggest. Now, of course, like I said, uh, some work has gone into, into wrapping this auto suggest so that it works with our form. but Besides that, the important stuff is that I have something to work with. I have something that can provide suggestions for us. Let's see if I have changed here session form with auto suggest. Right? So if I use that component instead, when I type, I have suggestions for the speaker name. And I type anything else, and it's working. OK? Commit. Use auto suggest component for suggestions. And then what I want is to have auto complete for the avatar. When I select the name, I want to auto-complete the avatar. Again, there is a slight change that I need to 
add, and that change is where what is what is it? Let's see. The change should have been something like something like I went a little bit too far here, but let's do this. We do a slight change. In this auto suggest field, do add the property that says autocomplete this avatar field that I have. So in this, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? If I have a props autocomplete, then I go through each field name and I change that field according to the suggestion field. So Alastair, select, and I have the autocomplete. So commit, add autocomplete for the avatar field. What else? I have delayed suggestions, right? Again, some work has been gone into this, but I can show you, right? So I have a debounced auto suggest field, which uses a debounce wrapper for the lodash function. Maybe you've heard of lodash. It's a it's a library that provides a lot of useful fu useful functions. One of those functions is to debounce the 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 call of a function. So I wrap that into a class and I use it. I say new debounce. So what I'm saying, debounce this function for me after well, a thousand milliseconds. And I use this debounce instead. So when I do a suggestions fetch request, I debounce the search. Right? And this debounced auto suggest field is used in the session form instead of the auto suggest field. So if I compare this to this, you should see that the only change is that I replaced that field with the debounced auto suggest field component. So I'm going to use this instead, right? I use this, I import it. And let's see how it looks. See, there, there's a delay there. Typing, 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 nothing happens. Stop. It sends the request. It gets a response. So that's cool. Right? Delay and then show. OK. debounce the request to server. We don't have a server, but nevertheless, you get the idea. What else? Before, after we delay the suggestions, we have to show a loading bar. And then again, we have a progress bar provided by the React Toolbox. I can even show you if I copy this into the app, just for the heck of it. Let's see. And this should be imported, unless it already did. No? Then we will just copy-paste. Right. Progress bar, where are you? Import. We imported somewhere around here. Let's see. Right, so we have a progress bar, but we need that inside the the, the dialog. So we use this hidden progress bar because we have to uh, show that progress bar only when we start searching. Right? So if I use this into the 
session form. Uh, into the dialog, sorry, somewhere around here, no? Where were you? Come on. Hidden progress bar, hidden progress bar. Uh, okay, so we just have to add it in that case. We add it to the dialog bar, right? The dialog, let's see, maybe here, hidden progress bar. And we delete the other progress bar from the app. Start typing and it hides. Why does it show only uh, I start typing? Because there's somewhere around in this uh, in this session form, let's, let's take a look. Where was it? Um, show progress bar. No? What was it called? Yeah, show, show progress bar. We have dispatch. So inside the on suggestions fetch requested, we dispatch the event hey, progress bar, I need you to show. And after I debounce and I search the suggestions, I get the suggestions from their server, now I hide it. So I do this only by dispatching some events, and Redux will take care of that for me, right? So I have a progress bar as well. And that's it. That's, that's our web app just as the product owner has requested of us, right? So let's recap. Huh? What I want you to uh, remember from this talk, at least, is the fact that we have very easily added layers upon layers of components. First, we had, for example, in that form, we had an input that provi was provided to us by React Toolbox that could be wrapped inside a field component provided by Redux form. I wrapped that into an auto-suggest component provided by another library, and I wrapped that with a debounce function. So it's very, very easy to compose all of these together to have something that works seamless seamlessly. That's the main point that should stick with you after this talk. And this is not really just uh, specific to React. I assume, and I remember when I've done Angular a few years ago, that it was just as easy. I assume that it's still the case today. Uh, you can probably do this with web components as well, the, the web components that are uh, conforming to the standard. So this is uh, something that can help you build a uh, web application very easily and very fast. And going back to the tools and techniques, we had some slicing, we had some prioritization, we commit often, and of course we use whatever web components we want be it React, Angular, Polymer, whatever. What I didn't touch upon is unit testing, uh, but uh, I am happy to tell you that you can unit test React components very easily. Uh, I had a talk at some point. You can Google um, unit testing with React Redux, and maybe my talk will come up. Um, where I demonstrated unit testing in React and Redux. And uh, of course, Mosaic Works offers a workshop, so maybe you want to check that out to, to see uh, if you want to learn uh, unit testing on, for yourself. Uh, check out the Software Design School. Maybe you attended Alex's uh, talk where he announced the, the, the launch of, uh, of this design school if you want to 
to learn more about how you um, need to approach software design. Yeah. And that's my talk. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. I think we have a couple of minutes. If not, you can find me around um, at any time during the day, and I will be happy to, to answer your questions. Thank you very much.